So Dave, where are we today then? Well today we come to Rockbourne Roman Villa. Okay. Which is one of the rural outposts uh, looked after by the Hampshire Cultural Trust. <laughs> um, it's a site that was uh, discovered way back in the 1940s mm. um, and then excavated uh, over a long period of time. Um, and uh, as you can see now it has a very fine museum which houses all the material that was dug up here. It's been looked after by the museum service for about 35 years now. Mm. Um, so we're going to look at some of the key features of the site which is laid out okay. in the grounds before we take a look at some of the objects I'm showing the museum. Sounds good. Let's do it. So what can you tell me about the ruins here Dave? Well this is where it all began. This is where the site was discovered. Mm. Um, the area around here was a well-known rabbit warren uh, and a farmer was digging out his ferret which he'd lost in the warren oh. uh, one day and he came up with a lot of tile and oyster shell yeah. and he showed these to a chap called uh, A.T. Morley Hewitt, a well-known uh, antiquarian who lived in Fawley Bridge, um, mm. who realised they were Roman mm. uh, and so he got permission to come and have a, a trial excavation. Uh, he dug down Mm. Um, and incredibly, he came straight down upon a, a Roman mosaic. Oh. Now, it was wartime, it was 1942. Mm. Uh, he'd come down on this star-shaped mosaic. I mean, today I'd call it an Indiana Jones moment. I mean, it really <laughs> was. Um, but he realised, of course, it would be difficult to do more work in mm. the war years. So he purchased the, the site, he bought mm. a couple of acres, uh, and he waited then another 10 years before you know, starting to dig mm. in earnest. But really, this is the spot where um, the site was discovered, um, and as I say, incredibly, <laughs> with that wonderful find. Yeah. So what did he actually find, Dave? So he'd come down into a, a bath suite, a bath complex, um, with a mosaic floor running right through this uh, main hall here. Um, and then it, later it was, uh, uh, altered and a cold plunge, the octagonal cold plunge, was inserted into it. It fit right into the mosaic, but they were always doing that sort of alteration and refinement. Um, but this was one of the uh, the main bath houses for the villa. So Morley Hewitt realised that he'd uh, stumbled upon a, a Roman villa site. Yeah. And as I say, he bought quite an area of, of land. And then in the 1950s, he started to excavate it um, and uh, it was all going slowly until they got on the television in 1960. <laughs> um, a, a little program called Dig That Villa mm. um, and the following weekend the lanes around Rockbourne were jammed with people coming to see the site, trying wow. to find the site first of all and, then, <laughs> and he got lots of volunteer help so a, a team of volunteers sort of uh, built up from them and they worked steadily on the site then for the next 20 25 years um, and the whole plan of the site is now laid out and so we can sort of appreciate uh, the way in which the, uh, the, the settlement developed uh, and we think that one of the first features were a number of round houses and you can see the, the white circle here on our feet which actually lays out the plan of a round house so that would be a timber round house you know, like an iron age round house um, and then that's replaced, replaced on the same location mm. by uh, the rectangular building, mm. so the red gravel there, mm. showing the, the actual first masonry building, a, you know, a Roman wow. style, um, flint, mortar, mm. uh, probably a, a tiled roof, things like that. Um, and that didn't happen until the, the, the Roman building, until very late on in the first century. So it took, uh, you know, a good hundred years, Mm. Uh, 50, 100 years after the Roman conquest, before they'd actually turned their uh, native style building mm. into something you know, far more that we would con uh, consider to be uh, Roman. And that must have happened as they uh, farmed the land around here, and obviously with a monetary economy, they were beginning to bring wealth back into the, uh, the mm. place, and they could afford then to you know, have, uh, builders in, have the builders in, and new materials and so on, mm -hmm. uh, and the site developed. But that didn't last too long, uh, because uh, and, and they must have been doing very well as a, mm -hmm. as a 
concern uh, because they decided to get rid of that um, and then started to build afresh just a few meters away from us um, and create a whole new set of buildings which were quite uh, magnificent by comparison. What's this structure we're in now then? Well, we'd call that first house a cottage mm. style uh, villa okay. because it's quite a simple arrangement. Mm. And what we've come to here is what uh, they next built, which mm. we call a corridor style okay. villa. And you and me were actually stood in the corridor. Oh, so if you can see from our feet running away in that direction, mm. there's this uh, long corridor uh, and all the rooms mm. actually you can access from the corridor. So there's one main entrance just down there mm. uh, to your right and that would face into the, the main room, the room in which mm. the villa owner would receive all his <laughs> clients and his mm. workers and everything else, um, that would be his, his sort of office, his main room there. Mm. And then on either side would be bedrooms and other you know, dining rooms and other functional rooms. But as I say, the key thing is this corridor because that sort of gives its name to the type. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, um, what was very important to the Romans was bathing. And okay. so on the back of your corridor villa, mm -hmm. you had a bathhouse constructed. Mm -hmm. So very convenient, sort of tucked on the back there. Um, and you can see that in the distance where the uh, information panel is, and that little bit of open display there. Mm -hmm. That's the hypercourse, the underfloor heating, the hot room of the bath. Uh, and so you've got the whole complex. And you can see, uh, following uh, the one we, we looked at previously, just 50, 100 years uh, duration, they've got something really big, mm. uh, really quite splendid by comparison with what they were uh, living in before. Mm, so you definitely. can really see the development of the site from a cottage to a corridor, something of mm. some substance. I really like the tiles, Dave, but what was this room for? This room was dining room. Okay. It's one of um, eight rooms that had mosaics mm. at one point. Um, but we were only able to display two of them because some of the fragmentary remains. So this one is complete. Um, and now we've come around the corner from our corridor here. Mm. So they added another wing. Okay. Um, and you wouldn't believe it, but now we can call it a wing corridor mm -hmm. because it's a corridor with, a, with mm. additional rooms down the side which make it uh, a winged arrangement. Mm. Um, and the reason we know the function of this mm -hmm. room is because of the pattern uh, in the mosaic. Now it might be sort of geometric, it's not figurative and interesting in that regard, mm. but the actual layout shows where the furniture stood in the room. So we think the entrance was over here, uh, although um, very cunningly we haven't shown where the door was in the <laughs> door. We have to jump into this room. But you come in in that direction from the kitchens, which mm -hmm. we know were over there, mm -hmm. because we found pots set into the floor and other features of the kitchen, the glove and um, And then, uh, as you probably know, the Romans like to recline on a couch to eat their food. And um, so the couch is quite nice. The couch is quite nice. So room for three here. One head out on that arrangement over there. Mm -hmm. One there. And then one here. Just as the actual layout of the pattern on the floor shows you. So three couches, tricliner, triclinic. <laughs> and in the middle, where your little tables were no doubt set with your sweet meats on. Uh, the most decorative part of the uh, mosaic with a fine little symbol in the middle. Although, sad to say, the original little square was pinched. And so that's why that looks so bright and shiny, <laughs> because that's uh, a replacement done from the photographs that were taken when the room was, uh, was excavated. But yes, a nice uh, dining room. Um, and, and we think by this time, then uh, the, the running of the villa was probably an extended family. Uh, so they needed more than our corridor villa. They needed to expand. Mm. Uh, you know, you can imagine brothers, cousins, mm. sisters, aunts. Um, so perhaps two families 
uh, because they also then built the other bath suite, the one where the whole story began when the ferry uh, mm. found the uh, oyster shell in the tunnel. <laughs> um, and that continued this wing going down here. Um, so you've got baths there and baths uh, behind the, the corridor below. So we come right across to the other side of the site. Yeah. Um, because there's a whole range of buildings here mm. uh, and a well. Very useful uh, to have that there. Um, and this is the sort of business side mm. of, the, of the farm. These are the farm buildings, a uh, whole range of farm buildings here. Um, and it means that we've then got um, a big enclosed area. Mm -hmm. So in our definition of villas, we've gone from cottage <laughs> to... It was the corridor building. Excellent. So the winged corridor. Mm -hmm. And now we call it a courtyard villa because okay. uh, these buildings here, although they're you know, practical in uh, their use, mm. and the ones for living and bathing over there, mm -hmm. uh, they, they form that great sort of rectangle yeah. which closes a courtyard. <laughs> and so you can see that, you know, massive area uh, involved, mm. um, but a whole space in the middle where all the farmyard business could go on. <laughs> and one of the uh, you know, least prepossessing buildings is, is actually where we're stood mm. uh, because we know that there's a great aisled barn which goes off from this corner where we're standing mm -hmm. now and disappears under the road. Oh. Um, and uh, from Hampshire, other Hampshire sites where these aisled barns have been excavated in full, um, and they were sort of church like in their scale and size. And we think that all the, you know, the, the servants. Uh, and the workers probably lived here. So, mm. you know, the owners lived in the, the gracious, graceful houses over there, um, working rooms and buildings down here, smithy, probably, things like that. Um, and then everyone else gathered in this big building here, this big barn, <laughs> um, where they, you know, ate, slept, worked, everything else. Well, we'll come here to uh, a special spot because um, Morley Hewitt, mm -hmm. who was very keen on the things that were found you know, as the site was excavated, particularly the coins, uh, he kept a nice list of about 600 coins that they found over the years. And on the uh, 26th of August 1967, it was jackpot day <laughs> because here in this very location um, they discovered a pot buried in the ground, oh. and inside that pot. There were 7,717 coins. <laughs> so uh, wow. a proper uh, uh, burial of, uh, mm. uh, of treasure for whatever reason. Um, and um, they were silvered, some of them, but they were copper alloy mostly. It wasn't uh, gold and silver treasure. Um, and of course, we used to think that uh, money like this was buried in time of trouble. Mm in order to keep it safe. Yeah. Uh, but these days we think there's probably as much, it's as likely that there's a ritual or religious reason. So you've got all this, uh, this wealth, but if you give it to the gods, if you put mm. it in a pot, put it in the ground, then you know things will go well for you, continue to go yeah. well for you. Um, so we suspect that that's what uh, uh, this actual it was uh, about and it was um, about the, the oldest uh, or the youngest coin it was about 305 AD so it was about that time it was uh, buried. Um, but it's an interesting tale because uh, when the coins were taken out and, uh, for identification um, 7,000 plus of them um, mm -hmm. But by the time we got to put the museum displays together, um, there were only um, a thousand left because oh. they'd sold some off and uh, mm. uh, given some away. Mm. Uh, I think Morley Hewitt gave them away as Christmas presents to the <laughs> diggers and things like that. Uh, so a large hoard initially, um, uh, and quite a small one in the museum mm. today. So now that we're in the museum, what can we see here? Well, the great thing about rock is that all those finds that were, were made at the excavation site are here on show in the museum. Okay. So really you've got things to represent the whole of the Roman way of life. 
So there's everything from the you know, farming side of the activity, tools and uh, animal bones and so on, to show us what uh, species they were. But right through to um, actual you know, items like jewellery and so on. So there are brooches, bone hairpins, mm -hmm. uh, kimberly shell bracelets. Um, and then of course you've got all the examples of the building material as well. Mm -hmm. As they change from timber and thatch to stone and, uh, and you know, clay fire, that things survive. So you've mm -hmm. got um, wonderful stone finial, a okay, nice decorative yeah. piece, which we think was on the end of the bath house. Uh, you've got lead pipes from the plumbing. Uh, so there's really that whole range. Uh, and there are even two milestones. Um, now, they're not milestones that say, you know, X miles to yeah. such a place. They were dedications to the emperor of the day. Um, and they'd have been set up by the road. Because it was probably the responsibility of the uh, villa owner, the landowner, mm -hmm. for the upkeep of the road. <laughs> but um, when, you know, as soon as that emperor had uh, disappeared, and of course, mm -hmm. um, we didn't have too long uh, on the throne generally in the mm -hmm. uh, third century AD, um, they brought the stones back to the site and used them as lintels in the building, mm -hmm. um, which is how they survived. So, you know, they're, they're rather splendid finds here. So you've got a full range, uh, really rich, mm -hmm. if you like Roman. The Roman period, if you like Roman things, mm. and there's a really good display here in the Museum of Rockland. Wonderful.